Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch, Rob Jarrell, and today we're going to recap this past Saturday's Bellator Dynamite in which we had a joint MMA and kickboxing card with Glory World Series. Now, if you guys caught the quick counter, that was me giving you a preview of that video, I mean of that show, in which I explained that back in the day, Pride Fighting and K1 kickboxing did a similar thing over in Japan where they combined their kickboxing talent and their MMA talent to great success. It looked like this card shaped up to be a pretty good success as well. It was a lot of good action. You had the best of both worlds. You had great striking. You had great MMA going on. You had like great groundwork. And overall left the fans very entertained with another special announcement that we'll get into later. Take it away, Rob. All right, so this was a special of Dynamite. We had the light heavyweight tournament, which uh, featured King Mo Luol, newcomer uh, Phil Davis, yes. Phil Mr. Wonderful Davis, Linton Vassell, yes, and Emmanuel Newton. And Emmanuel Newton. As well, we had the title match with Tito. Tito Ortiz. Versus, I can never remember his name, but what was his name? Liam McGeary. Who is champion of Bellator 205. Yes. Then we had Dynamite, which which featured Paul Simtex Daly yes. versus... It was Gonzalez. I can't remember his first name. That is our bad. Last name is Gonzalez. Just to start out with that one, it was, to me, kind of uneventful. I was looking for these two hard-hitting guys to really go at it. But... Maybe it was the bigger gloves. I didn't see Simtex and I didn't see really Gonzalez throw those, um, the amount of punches that I was looking for from the two of them. And you know, Daly has, he, he has explosive in both hands, but I just, I'm gonna be honest, I really didn't see it. Yeah, um, for both of them, it was their first kickboxing match. So they were probably trying, I don't, I don't really know, you know, but it seemed like they were a little hesitant to be kicked in the face and also uh, they looked a little lost at times like when they couldn't go for any grapples or takedowns or anything like that so if they're going to continue to do it they just keep working on it so they can kind of get that transition better or they can just stick with MMA which daily is pretty decent at yeah and um, also they had a, a light heavyweight title fight on on the glory side as well, we had Zach Moikasa and uh, crap, just had a brain fart. But that fight was pretty uneventful as well. Um, Which is very uncharacteristic of glory because it's usually some great action. Yeah, they did have great action in the female fight where the wife of Gilbert Melendez absolutely dismantled her opponent. And unfortunately, that was her first fight, but um, she had trained for a few years unfortunately the wife of Gilbert Melendez has been training for years and had a few Muay Thai fights as well but was making her glory debut that's that's just a rough yeah that was a rough welcome into combat sports I mean Melendez did everything except for stop her I mean she hit her with vicious combinations vicious counter punches absurd leg kicks head kicks body kicks you name it she landed it and landed it in bunches. So shout out to her opponent for lasting and surviving that onslaught. And before we move on, I'm just going to say this. You probably don't watch the women's fights. You need to sit down. All Anyone that's watching the video, sit down and watch the women's fights. Because those are some of the best action fights that you will see in combat sports. Them women go at it. Yes, they do. And... Be it the chauvinist and all of us, they're not bad to look at it as well. That's just an extra plus. Yes. Hey, they like to look mm -hmm. at the guys in the, in the short shorts, so, you know, we can look at the nice looking ladies too. All right, let's move on to the light heavyweight tournament they had in Bellator to determine the number one contender for the winner of Tito Ortiz versus Liam McGeary. In the first fight, we had King Mo versus Linton Vassell. And in this one, I said in the pre-fight video that King Mo's wrestling would be what took him to the victory because of Vassell's height and reach advantage. 
but he was able to be very successful on his feet. What you got, Rob? Um, I thought it was a really good fight. King Mo came through, but I think he, maybe to no fault of his own, because these were very um, high skill matches. He took, to me, almost some unnecessary punishment, which is why, even in the win, he couldn't move on to fight. Uh, the in winner of the the Phil, then the winner of the Phil Davis Manuel Newton fight because he he was he caught a takedown and a slam for his troubles. He took several leg kicks to that same side, and if I'm not mistaken, I don't was it a bruise or was it a, a broken rib? Uh, I don't know. They didn't say at the time. They just said that he was injured and couldn't continue. Well, if I'm not mistaken, it was a rib injury, and you can tell he was. You could physically see that he was in pain and unable to continue. He wanted to fight. Mentally, he, he, he wanted his body to do exactly what he wanted to do, but um, you just proceed on the side of caution. You right. take him out of that fight. That fight will always be there. Um, yeah, being that King Mo is a star in Bellator. And you want to see both of them at 100%. Right. Um, he was very good countering Vassell with the right hand, landed it several times, hurt him very badly. Um, in the second round, Vassell kind of came back a little bit, landed his jab a lot, like Rob said, got a big time takedown, lots of leg kicks. King Mo was able to reverse that, get a takedown of his own, mm -hmm. get back on top control, grind it out for the rest of the round. He gets the win, but doesn't move on because of the injury that Rob just talked about. Now, in the second semifinal match, we had Phil Mr. Wonderful Davis making his Bellator debut against former champion Emmanuel Newton. Now, in the pre-fight video, once again, I said that the pedigree of Phil Davis and his UFC top-level experience would be able to overcome the trickiness and awkward uh, stylings of Emmanuel Newton. If you've seen him fight before, he can throw a punch or kick from any position, any angle. He throws them at off times. A lot of times when people aren't ready to receive a punch or a kick from him and the types of kicks that he throws are very awkward. Like he'll throw back kicks like after turning his back and uh, spinning back fists come out of nowhere. Sometimes just a regular old back fist. And he has a very herky-jerky style, something that takes a lot of getting used to. Not for someone like Bill Davis. Yeah, this guy is... Probably one of the most athletic. He was one of the most athletic 205 pounders in, in the, the UFC. UFC. Yeah. So him coming over here, he to me automatically became the most athletic fighter in that division. And he showed it that and his pure wrestling skills. That is his background that he's worked on. Um, he wasn't as gun shy in in these fights as he was with UFC, yeah. but he he went for it. He came and made a statement. Yes, um, he, did. he just used those. Um, his wrestling predator, he got a couple of takedowns. He was able to smother the offense of Emmanuel Newton. Um, and several times where he had control, um, rear control. So, and, um, and how many times did he take him down? It was, I think it was, I think it just was just once. Once he got him down the yeah, first time, yeah. it was over because he locked in a Kimura. And that was the first time that Emmanuel Newton had been stopped since 2006. So... The guy, like Phil Davis, is just going to be a player in the 205 pound division yeah. uh, with Bellator. Um, if not, possibly fighting for the championship in his next fight, unless he fights King Mo. Yeah, um, he probably will. Let's talk about the final before we go get into that. Uh, in the finals, uh, because King Mo was unable to continue, earlier on on Spike.com, they had a uh, alternate match with Francis Carmon coming out the winner of that. Uh, Francis Carmon is a gym mate of George St. Pierre. Pretty good guy. Uh, not quite top level, but very, very capable of making someone look bad. But not on this night. Mm -mm. Phil Davis brought out the striking for this one. Um, he rarely stops an opponent in that fashion. Um, he's usually like, you know, the grounded out decision type of guy. But he caught Carmon with a leaping left hook, and that was it. It, I mean, Phil Davis just really showed off on this past Saturday, and you gotta give him some props for that. Anything you wanna add before we move on? Uh, 
No, that was pretty much it. It was a few punches later, and the, the referee had to step in. <laughs> right. Um, so let's move on to the title fight where we had Liam McGeary, who's undefeated and at 10 fights, fighting Tito Ortiz, who's been fighting since God knows how long. Um, he was like one of the first person people I saw fight in the UFC back in like the early 2000s, um, you know, when they start coming on a, on a more regular basis. So he has a wealth of experience. He was the, I think he's the second longest UFC light heavyweight champion, longest title reign. Um, they kind of deleted him from the history books when he left, but he is the second longest reigning UFC light heavyweight titleist. Um, fought them all, won some, lost some. The expectation was that even though he's very experienced, he's kind of up there in age. A little long in the tooth, those battles may have taken their toll on him. And McGeary would be able to outlast him via decision. I believe that's what I said on my preview video. However, that was not the case once again. Uh, Tito Ortiz looked great. Mm -hmm. Taking McGeary down, showing him he was a, a rookie. Beating him up, ground and pound. Then he makes one mistake. And the jujitsu ace that Liam McGarry is, he capitalized on it, locked in a reverse triangle, super fast, and the fight was over. Only takes one mistake. Yes, it does. And Tito said, hey, you got the best Tito Ortiz in eight or nine years. I did my best. I came out here to win. I was going to win. You're the real deal. So now Liam McGarry has had some of the quickest knockouts in Bellator. He's beaten uh, the longtime champ in Emmanuel Newton. He's now beaten a proven vet and legend in the sport in Tito Ortiz. Next up, Phil Davis. That's going to be a damn good fight. Now, this is, I don't know how Bellator and Scott Cooper is going to work it, but that's what we want to see, McGarry versus Davis. But King Mo is going to make his... Uh, his 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 name known again because I think he really wants to fight Phil Davis. He wants that championship. He he wants to fight for the belt. Um, he's either going to fight the winner of Phil Davis and McGarry, or he's going to fight Davis first. We'll see. He deserves the fight. And it just to me it just says a lot because Phil Davis first fight on Bellator. First two fights. First two fights. Yes, first two fights. 2-0 two so far. That's successful. In one night. In one night. Moving over from UFC. I'm trying to figure out a way to phrase it, and but this shows, one, the pedigree of the guys in the UFC. Yeah. The growth in Bellator. Yeah. And the fact that this is... Let's see, we had Phil Davis, we had... Was it Josh Thompson? Yes, yeah, Josh Thompson. Josh Thompson fight. Then we had Tito Ortiz that has moved over. And who else has moved? It's been Rampage left and came back. Right. So you start, you're going to start seeing these guys. I don't know if it's for new challenges or anything else that's coming, that's going on. But you're going to start seeing guys go from UFC to Bellator. Yeah. A lot of them have said it's really because of that Reebok deal. Yeah, that's... That's, that's, that re depends on who you are. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I personally think Phil Davis has earned his title shot. He beat the two guys that he needed to beat to get the title shot. So he should get that title shot. Mm -hmm. But King Mo should either get a number one contenders match or next crack at the belt. I think that's how that should go. Yeah. So stay tuned to Bellator. They've been putting on some really great fights. Um, there is an alternative to the UFC out there, and if you're an MMA fan, you already know that. But they did announce before the main event that Fedor Emelianenko is coming back. New Year's Eve. Now, if you're an MMA fan, you should be excited about that. Because Fedor, Fedor is the man. Arguably the best heavyweight MMA fighter in history. Yeah, if you know MMA hasn't been around that long. But the guys are true. And we want to see if he can still do it. So, look forward to that New Year's Eve. Um, 
That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share it with your friends, all your MMA friends, or people who are looking to get into MMA. Share it with them, too. You can hit us up on most uh, social networking, Facebook, Google+, Instagram, Capital of Combat. You can hit us up on our email, capitalcombat at gmail.com. Any questions, comments, hit us up below. Hit us up on those pages. We'll get you in the combat mailbag. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. This is round one, and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming in cost. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire. My demons are in a rage. Keep thinking that it's a game. I kick crime, hurricane. I told them I don't play. I'm liquid. Black Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Street Fighter.